and there, there are several different species. This is the, the more eastern one of the tall grass prairies. We have Tennesseeensis, which I have one in my rock garden next to the driveway, which is a real deep, beautiful purple color. It's a, state, it's a federally endangered species, and there's a nursery that actually has a license to sell them. But this is the one that we found. This species, particular one, is, is grows all the way out to eastern Kansas. Yet when you get into Indiana and Illinois, you start getting the different species, which is also blooming right now along the driveway, which is the pale purple coneflower. But if any of you know anything about health food stores, you see a lot of preparations of echinacea. <laughs> and if you read the label, typically it's echinacea purpurea, the purple coneflower. And the coneflower, actually what, the, what most of the, the, the Great Plains Indian use was pallida, which is the pale purple coneflower, which grows in Indiana further west. And also, if you get out into Colorado, into the Dakotas, you get another one called Angustifolia, the narrowly purple coneflower, which is not very colorful. But they use those. But in any event, all these echinacea are used medicinally. In fact, this particular species, uh, or this genus, was used more than any other pl single plant by Native Americans for medicinal purposes. And we still use it in our health food stores. Um, it's used for a variety of different what ails you type things, almost the a panacea. Leaf? Is it the leaf that's used, or what's it? They, they can make a tea out of the leaf and the stems and the flowers, but more often it's the dry roots. But it is kind of nifty that here again is one of those plants that we had, didn't appreciate. Brits came over, they said this is a beautiful garden species. Uh, Echinacea, the genus, comes from the Greek word for the spiny, this like the sea urchin. And right now, these have little special bracts on them. They're not so bad. They're kind of cool. It's a beautiful plant. When that goes to seed, you grab these things, they grab you back. They have spines that impel your fingers. So they're very much like a sea urchin. But they're a beautiful plant. It's a great addition to your prairie if you're going to grow one because they often bloom by the second year, and they really are a, a magnet for butterflies. And they're an easy.